let's take a look at the charge on the carbonate ion. And that's CO3, and the charge is 2 minus. And that's on the whole carbonate ion. So when we talk about the carbonate ion, the whole thing has a 2 minus ionic charge. There's two ways we could know that. One is we could look at substances that have the carbonate ion in them, something like sodium carbonate. Sodium, that's in group 1. It has a 1 plus ionic charge, and there's two of them. So the carbonate, the whole thing here, it has to be 2 minus. So we have a neutral compound. These balance out. So that's the carbonate ion. Or we could look at something like calcium carbonate, CaCO3, calcium group 2, that's 2 plus carbonate ion needs to be 2 minus, so those numbers balance out, give us a net charge of 0. So one way is to look at a compound that has the carbonate ion in it, like sodium carbonate or calcium carbonate. The other way is to look at the formal charge on each of the atoms in the carbonate ion. Let's do that. So I have a Lewis structure, and since it's an ion, I have the brackets with the 2 minus on the outside, the ionic charge. If we calculated the formal charge for each element, this is what we'd get. So the carbon would be zero, and the double bonded oxygen, that would be zero as well. But these single bonds here, these oxygens with single bonds, they would be negative one. Negative one and negative one, that gives us the negative two. So that's why we have this two minus as the charge on the carbonate ion. Note that we would have resonance that this double bond and these single bonds, they'd be averaged out. So we'd have resonance forms for the carbonate ion. But overall, the carbonate ion, that would be the two minus. So those are two ways you can find the charge for the carbonate ion. This is Dr. B, and thanks for watching.